Hey there, welcome to episode 26, I had to reference it here, yep. 26 of the Dodgeball Marketing Podcast. My name is Chris and this is Michael. Hey everybody. And today, Michael, we're going to talk about KPIs. Yep. Uh, that means key performance indicators, specifically KPIs related to your website. Um, Michael, the reason this is so important is because we can talk about traffic all day long, impressions all day long, but they really, they're really they really not KPIs as it relates to your business. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about things that are close to making money and being profitable. So yeah. whether that's sales, whether that's appointment requests, or whether that's whatever it is, um, we're, we're going to talk about how to best handle KPIs, how to set them up, how to monitor them, and you know how to succeed with your website beyond impressions and clicks. Yeah, yeah. And first step is uh, setting your priorities, knowing what your priorities are, and making sure that you have everything tied together to manage around those priorities. So there are a lot of companies that don't sell anything on the internet. They may be using the internet to engage uh, folks uh, to introduce their brand and to basically educate them and make them know that a service is available. I would say most businesses are yeah, like that. Yeah, a lot that. of businesses are like that. Yeah, every, like, any, every local business. Yeah, of those. yeah, like a, yeah, any kind of local service business. You, you know, you may be doing e-commerce or taking online orders or even restaurants. You know, driving people to an app or to call or to place an order online. But in general, a lot of the businesses that use the internet for marketing. Even a lot of our B2B customers uh, in, in what we do, um, they're often just trying to educate and inform and get uh, maybe at the end of the day a sales lead, uh, but that's really different. So number one is understanding what your priorities are. You uh, And this, <laughs> this is funny, but it may not be obvious to everyone. Even inside of an organization, there are often different sets of assumptions with people's different levels of sophistication of your sales funnels. They may not know what the sales team has done to really discern and understand the, the best ideal customer and that they're not somebody who necessarily shows up on the website and five minutes later is calling or filling out a form. Uh, there may be multiple touches. So understanding your sales funnel and then what the extent or the, the closest thing to a transaction or closest thing to the money for you is going to be possible on the internet. So, um, so yeah, so just understanding, you know, what are we trying to accomplish? Are we doing online sales? Are we doing lead generation or are we just doing branding and awareness? What's the extent of what's possible for us as a company with the internet? And then understanding how to optimize around that. And then a real missed opportunity that we see quite often is not getting everything tied together and integrated with your analytics so that you can actually see and manage to that event. Um, if, you're, if the thing that is possible on the internet that's closest to the money for you is to generate a sales lead, how many times have we had somebody come to us with a website or a campaign or a set of ideas, and they're, they've got really great tracking of their website traffic. Maybe maybe we start tracking their rankings and search engines. They've got a lot of different KPIs around their advertising campaign, and they know how many form fills they're getting. But then the phone number is just going to some dumb uh, phone number that they think is like their number, their phone number, and we've had it for years, and we're not even tying that in to get it connected <coughs> to the analytics. It's yep. a really common situation that half of the activity around what a company says is their most important thing to do with the internet is not really even being tracked. And so getting phone and email tracked and integrated, either to your Google Analytics or your, or your other platforms, absolutely critical. Yep. Uh, and then, Chris, let's take this further. Uh, what are uh, Google Analytics goals and how do we use those to tie in and to to set KPIs. Yeah, that flows in nicely with what you just talked about. Like everything that's possible to do on the site, we should have a handle on and be tracking. And you can do that through a thing called Google Analytics, Analytics goals. And I think with Google Analytics, what is it, four coming out, they're going to change that to say conversions, but it's the same thing. And it's ways that you can track all of those things. So everything from contact form fills to phone calls is what you talked about. Um, you can even tr track when someone clicks a download button for downloading a PDF or something like that. Time on site, mm -hmm. video views. There's almost nothing that you can't track if you set it up correctly. So um, I've, I know I've worked with clients where I come in and they'll and they'll and I'll say, yeah, how, how many how many leads are you typical? How many phone calls are you typically getting from the website? And they'll say, oh, about. 20 a month, and then I'll go into Google Analytics and there's no goal set up. Right. So like, how do you know that? Some of those phone calls can be coming from somebody that shared your phone number from, yeah. to somebody else. Uh, the, the yellow pages that people still use that. So, uh, sometimes those are just the calls that made it through a poor user experience incoming phone sure. network 
and made it all the way through to a tracking sheet. Exactly. So sometimes those are half of the reality. So, um, you know, table stakes for all this stuff is setting up your tracking properly. And the, and the benefit of that, of not just sticking your finger in the air, you can always go to your, webs uh, your um, website um, data and say, look at how many form fields you got. And that's helpful. But running that through analytics tells you where it came from, what region it came from, what device they were using, and the channel they came through. Did they come through LinkedIn? Did they come through a Google organic search? Did they come through Bing? It ties all that together and gives you a real sense of where the action's happening on your website. And you, the only way to do that is by setting up these goals within Google Analytics. So making sure that when you look in your Google Analytics uh, dashboard, or not your dashboard, but your um, access, and making sure that everything that matters to you on the website, phone call, form fill, ebook download, whatever it is for you, is tracked. And then you can start to optimize. You can't optimize what you can't measure and mm -hmm. track. So Google Analytics goals, make sure they're set up and set up properly. Yeah, and I would add a little tag onto that. Avoid the trap of buying into an expensive marketing automation platform. They're great if you're ready to do serious inbound marketing or uh, sequences of emails if you're ready to use the things that they're good at. But with GA, Google Analytics, you can actually fix a lot of these gaps mm -hmm. uh, for free. Uh, you can actually connect all these things and get it all working. So avoid the trap of buying a more sophisticated marketing automation platform because you're really buying the idea of getting your house in order. Uh, you can get your house in order with Google Analytics or you know with your platform before yep. before you get into use, more sophisticated marketing. Yeah, use the tactics. tools you have until what you want to do is greater than what that tool can provide, and then move to yeah. a different tool. Yeah, uh, Michael, let's have you take this next one. Yeah, pick, pick your marketing KPIs for better return on investment. Yeah, yeah, this this kind of builds off something we hinted at in the earlier segment. We um, we can always uh, imagine that there's a, a set of customers out there, and they're coming into our sales funnel. They're aware of the brand. They're looking at pricing options. They're ready to buy. And so we develop a sense of uh, what goes on with the customer journey. But it's important to remember that for the most part, uh, for, for a lot of businesses, only a portion of that is happening on the internet or on a particular page of your website or on a particular landing page experience. So understanding exactly what things you want to drive up, what are the, what are the numbers in the sequence that are the choke points that everyone who becomes a customer is going to go through this one choke point or this one point of contact that you can really understand and focus on driving up. Um, for us, it's qualified leads. It's, it's uh, you know, we, we work with a lot of companies who are doing lead generation on the internet. Yeah. Uh, a lot of B2B, a lot of healthcare, a lot of construction, uh, a lot of home services, the trades. Uh, you work a lot in health and wellness. Mm -hmm. uh, and so between our companies, we, we have a lot of folks who are trying to get a lead. So just using that as an example, um, it's easy to have form fills and consider that a lead. But if you, if you really want to cut out confusion, you can actually say, wait a second, is this a lead or is it a qualified lead? And so then you've made a real distinction that's really profound so that you're not so subject to the waves of uh, distraction that can happen with the complexity of the internet, you know, with random form fills, with duplicates, and, and you're really measuring something that everybody agrees is important. If we drove up qualified leads, it would really change us as a company. And so using, um, using the common sense of what really matters to understand what we really want. Uh, that's a really big factor. Another one is on traffic. Uh, yeah, we, uh, earlier you used the word hits and somebody else said, uh, a local. <laughs> it was like an old school. Yeah, I know. A local, that's why yeah, I used it. I almost stopped everything. <laughs> through How many hits we get? Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, local, local uh, SEO uh, uh, entrepreneur and, and uh, innovator, uh, John Hinshaw recently uh, put on Twitter, how many hits does your website get? And I think he was just trolling everybody. Um, but, um, but yeah, thinking about traffic versus traffic that's relevant. Uh, this is a really good one. So I really like in-area traffic, uh, traffic that's in your geographic area as opposed to website visits. Uh, that's a really good way to go from hits, which is not a real thing, uh, uh, to are these people. And so you're really coming down to uh, removing noise and getting away from the handles that people commonly use to describe KPIs to things that are closer to the money and real, real things for the world that you work in and really represent success. Yeah. Uh, all right, Chris, talk to us. Uh, this is an area that where you and I have spent a lot of investment and energy mm -hmm. over recent years to, to 
get really good at. But could you talk to us about creating marketing dashboards? Yeah, so this is just, to me, it's a way to, so we talked about using goals to track everything and get a handle on what's happening, measurement. And then a dashboard is just measuring that over time. Mm -hmm. So you take all the all, all of the data that you gather, say for January, we're in January 2021 right now, probably February before, well, before this is aired, but um, making making it simple, uh, it could be as simple as a Google Sheet where it's col um, monthly columns on the top and all the metrics that matter to you on the bottom so you can kind of see how you're tracking over time and see what needs to be addressed, what's working, what's not, and um, just have, developing a practice, even if it's... Um, rudimentary like a spreadsheet now if you wanted to go mm -hmm. further you could hire a, your company dog sure. marketing and, and yep. they'll put put it together for you oh um, yeah yeah we yeah, we have a whole uh, single login dashboard called apogee metrics uh, right. we don't really market under that name but we bring Google Analytics LinkedIn Facebook YouTube uh, custom metrics so it's all one, in one platform one private link, one login right one yeah. private link where everybody not to not that this is to pitch apogee metrics but right. like um, so if you want to get fancy with it, you could use yeah. uh, Google Data Studio or Tableau or one of these other platforms that are a little bit complicated to use. But if you could get your handle on it, you could bring up a live dashboard that can show you right. in real time what all of your metrics are doing. The point is, whether you use Google Sheets or a professionalized solution, is develop a regular routine, a cadence of maybe it's monthly, where mm -hmm. you're sitting down and you're, you're putting your data in and saying, how do we do this month compared to last month? What's the overall trend? You know, mm -hmm. are our uh, conversion, are our website conversions going up or down? What's happening with phone calls? Oh, why did we get four phone calls last month when the month before we got twenty? What's going on there? Like, so mm -hmm. it, it helps you to see patterns and to really get a sense for not only where you are but where you've been and the trajectory of things. Mm -hmm. So developing that uh, habit of creating a marketing dashboard and sticking sticking to it, even if it's simplified. Um, is really important in terms of getting a handle on what's going on in your business. Yeah, and most of how we think we're you know we're thinking about monthly numbers and annual numbers, and then uh, yeah, I'll talk about this as kind of a next segment to build on marketing dashboards. Uh, we really like the idea of developing awareness across your organization of your analytics. It's not always the case that everyone in your organization has the same set of assumptions about how the internet works and what it means to the company. Uh, so they um, may not all be sensitized to some things that you want to promote and actually see um, happen more often. Can I can I have yeah. interject one? This is based on what you said. Yeah. So you might think you might care about leads, but what do salespeople care about? Qualified leads. That's right. So you might be you might be in your dashboard bragging about leads if you're in one part of the company in the marketing side, but your salespeople are going like, I don't care if there's a hundred leads. Like that's right. Sixty percent of those were trash. So so yes. that that means you want to include qualified leads in your dashboard. Yes. Right? Sorry to interrupt, but no, just that's that exactly right. To what you said. And, and to build on what you're saying, leads are a little bit like hits. What is a lead? Uh, right. So sometimes if uh, if a company makes an investment, maybe in using a database for doing some email marketing, they may sort of consider all those outreach as leads. Well, they're not. And the salespeople are going to say, wait, what is this stuff? This isn't, you know, you're giving me just cold information. This is just data. These aren't leads. And so once you start to promote, these are the numbers we're looking at, you may have some people kind of push back and say, hey, that's not really what matters. And yeah. that's where it gets interesting. Yeah. Because then you're working as an organization to say, hey, what really makes us better? What really benefits us? At the end of the day, what's a real win? So then you've got leads, qualified leads, on-site quotes given. Yep. Pricing sales. Sales. You know, Pricing so then, you, then you could yeah. really build your funnel and mm -hmm. track it over time. That's where it gets really interesting yeah. and really effective. Yeah. In my sales funnel, we don't we don't consider it a lead unless it's a qualified lead and there's essentially it's on a path for a request for pricing. And one of our stages in our funnel is a request for pricing or, or actually pricing sent. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that's a, it's a very good kind of comparison. So, yeah, uh, we've, we've had so many interesting conversations around this with companies because um, here's what happens. Here's what's crazy. Everybody in every uh, level of an organization has a slightly different set of motives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the C-suite is very focused on appearances and they know that the board is a little bit checked out, but these traffic numbers have always got to move in the right direction. So when a Google core update happens and you maybe cut out a lot of out of service area traffic, suddenly they've got an emergency on their hands because they haven't been working from the best possible way of articulating what's happening on the site. Hey, traffic's going up. Yeah, a lot of it's out of traffic, but they don't know that. They wouldn't understand it. Uh, they're not sophisticated people with yep. 
uh, Google some, Analytics data. Yeah. Sometimes they sometimes they're very bottom line oriented. Yeah, and I would say maybe more often than not, they're like, I don't yeah. care how many, I don't care how many hits you got. Like, yeah. I care about how many how many new customers we have. Yeah. How many customers did we lose and what's the bottom line? That's right. Yeah. So being able to discern what are the actual real levers that drive the numbers that matter most. And then what we're doing with a lot of folks is setting up even uh, regular uh, pulse information. So uh, something that I think is very valuable is looking at year over year. Uh, we do a lot of SEO and that's kind of a slow cooker type of tactic. Uh, it's it's best when it's invested in consistently month after month for years at a time. Uh, sort of, you know, new content that you put on your website kind of builds up every month. You're, you're sort of building more stairs to go higher and higher. Uh, but sometimes you have to give that a little bit of time and see it. And so uh, if you want to correct for your own seasonality, you can look at year over year. So create Creating a sense across your organization of the things that everybody thinks are a big deal, seeing uh, if the snarky folks in the programmer pit will poke holes in your logic or if the sales team will sort of push back on certain things and say, hey, these, these leads aren't as hot as you think they are. Um, those are all helpful. Treat all those as a gift and try to incorporate those into really identifying and creating a conversation around which KPIs are really going to matter. All right. Great. Hey, thanks uh, for being on this episode, uh, How to Use Online Marketing KPIs Well. Smash subscribe. That's what the YouTubers say. Smash it. Smash, smash that, that subscribe, subscribe button. We don't care if you smash it. You can just click you it. Click it you gently want. and be nice to Yeah, that's screen. fine. Don't, yeah. don't, be, don't mess up your equipment or anything, your, your computer. All right. Hey, thanks. We'll see you on the next one.